Good morning, everybody. AmpRepairGuy.com. There's my phone number in my website. So, I'll be getting back to this early next week. I'll finish this up. This is a cap out of something else. Um, so, this will be done. Just waiting on the transformer, the plate transformer. And then I can get that built real quick. That'll be quick. I've made a ton of power supplies. Uh, okay, so today I'm working on a Kenwood TL922A. I already checked the filament transformer. Checks out. Plate comes up. You know, the uh, metering works. I didn't check the plate current meter yet, but... Um, so... I will do all the modifications. It has 10 meters already in it. And I'll service it. There's some black flaky stuff in there. I don't know what that's from. I didn't see anything burnt up, but I don't know. Got, maybe the cover was off for a while or something. I don't know. But so I'm going to get to work and I will be back shortly. See you soon. Hey, everybody. I'm back with the completed TL922. Okay, so I put the safety diode in. I put the series glitch resistor in. Strap here. Clean the output rotary switch, clean the contacts on that relay back there, clean the contacts on the TR relay up front underneath. All the meter lamps work. I'm going to clean out some of this black stuff, but it's tested, produces full output. Always make sure I get everything out of here before it leaves. Okay, so this has got a brand new fresh set of Pentalab tubes. I don't like turning around and stuff with the tubes in, so I always take them out. Okay, I'm going to flip it over and show you the bottom. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with the bottom. Grounded the grids the proper way. Did not use craft wire going to the screws with only some connected directly to ground. They're all connected to ground with pure copper strap. Added the strap for the low inductance mod. Band switch is clean. Got the new cap in here. Zener's good. So, I'm going to talk about something real quick. When you buy one of these, you really need pictures. I had a guy buy one on eBay. He got taken advantage of. Guy claimed it worked. It just, there's no way it worked. So, I'll go over a few things here. You always want close up pictures of the band switch. Normally, the contacts on this side are the ones that fail. This is a stock band switch. So you always want to make sure those contacts where they touch the wiper on both sides have not been blown apart. And I'll flip over and show you the top. Um, other thing, you know, if the choke, one of the stop, stock chokes is all congealed into one. I have one here somewhere. But normally they're a, a two-pi choke like this over here. So if it's congealed into one mass, then one of the tubes had flashed. So that's something else to look for. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over and show you the top real quick. I'll go over what to look at there. And this is that black stuff I was talking about. I don't know what it is. Something must have been stored somewhere nasty. Okay, be right back. Back with the top, you always want a picture of the air variable capacitor on the plate tune side because if there's damage, it'll be on the edge here, on one of these edges. And, you know, people have tried filing it, but it just still end up promoting a flash at a lower voltage than what it's rated for. The load air variable capacitor is very difficult to damage. I think I've only changed one, but the capacitor that was in the amplifier that came in, it was actually scraping. So it was shorting, you know, the, the plate was, um, these plates were short, one of the, the few of the plates were shorted to the ones at ground potential. So... Um, actually, these are at ground potential, and those ones are not. So, uh, you know, shot. So, those are two things to, to look at. And, you know, obviously the tubes, it's best if you can get a video of it working. You know, this is assuming you're getting it from someone you don't know. Um, you know, you want to see it working, and if you can. And really important, you know, if if they can key it, and you see that the, the amplifier is keying, the relay is functioning, then there's a pretty good chance that the filament transformer is okay if they turn it on and they go to try to key it and the relay the output tier relay does not engage or the other relay that means there's a good chance that, that winding's damaged 
and it'll end up needing a new filament transformer. So I always recommend paying with PayPal. Um, don't ever use uh, friends and family. Uh, you know, you just want to have recourse if it's not as described. So the other one had uh, some aftermarket bias work. Someone took out the TR relay, put some other relay in there, and the band switch was shot, the low turn was shot. Uh, you know, the grids were uh, uh, grounded in a funky way. I mean, it just had all sorts of crap, the crud done to it, and uh, you know, it's just uh, crazy. But um, so that's what I recommend when you go to buy an amplifier, and you know, then you have less. Uh, less chance of a headache once you receive it and I also recommend you know foam in place fragile pack just have them take the tubes out they can leave the parasitic suppressors in they can leave the anode caps on the top of the tubes as long as they're tight and uh, you know, bring the tubes and the amplifier to a genuine FedEx office ask for a foam in place fragile pack tight in the box for the amp and then a regular fragile pack for the tubes and insure them and most likely we'll be good to go so Thanks for watching. Here's my phone number and my website 203 892 4119 amprepairguy.com. I felt bad for the guy. I mean, there was just so much wrong with it. Uh, you know, just parts unit. He's going to try to get his money back, but it's it's just it's a nightmare. It's the worst one I've ever seen. Someone went in there, tried to get it to work, couldn't get it to work, and then sold it saying it worked. It's just very sad, but okay. Take care. See you guys again soon. 73. Sorry, one last thing. I forgot to zip tie the wiring. So, want everything nice and clean. Catch you later. 73.